This is Jack Whitaker, and the CBS Sports Spectacular today is going to show you one of the hardest fought, most widely discussed fights in recent years. The 12 rounder between Floyd Patterson and George Chevallo. As you know, there was some debate about the decision, or at least about the margin of victory. Today, you'll have your own chance to score it as you see it. We'll be showing you all the action, including pre-fight ceremonies and post-fight interviews. The fight itself will be called, as it was that night, by Don Dumphy and Muhammad Ali, or Cassius Clay. But in addition, we have our own panel of experts here who will look at the fight and its possible consequences with you. No one can be more expert than our first guest since he is the party of the first part, Floyd Patterson, the only man in history to regain the World Heavyweight Championship. Our second guest is also an only man in history, Rocky Marciano, the only heavyweight champion to retire without losing a single professional fight. And our third guest is the only man ever to write the biographies of Floyd Patterson and Rocky Marciano. He's Milton Gross, sports columnist of the New York Post and the North American Newspaper Alliance. We'll join Don Dunphy and Cassius Clay at ringside in just a moment. And now we take you to ringside at Madison Square Garden. Good evening, everyone. I'm Don Dunphy, a ringside commentator. Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous sports arena, is jam-packed with 19,000 enthusiastic sports fans tonight. Here's Floyd Patterson at 21, the youngest man to win the heavyweight crown. And after losing it to Ingemar Johansson, the only man ever to regain it by stopping Ingemar in a return. Now Floyd wants the crown back. And George Chivalo stands at the threshold of a great opportunity. Recently, he burst into contention by knocking out number one ranked Doug Jones. A win tonight could get him a shot at the title. Chevalo, who stands six feet one, has won 29 of his 39 fights with eight losses and two draws. He's knocked out 23 and has not been stopped. Patterson stands six feet. He's won 41 out of 45 with four losses, has stopped 31 and has been hauled at three times. At the commission weigh-in, Patterson of 197 and a quarter. The heaviest of his career, Chevalo, 207. Now it's a pleasure to introduce the man who is going to be my co-worker on this broadcast, Muhammad Ali, better known to sports fans as Cassius Clay, the heavyweight champion of the world. Champ, how does this fight look to you? Well, Don, I will tell you, I went to both camps, as you read about. Both boys in tip-top condition. Floyd Patterson is punching sharp. He's determined this is either do or die for him, another chance at championship. Uh, Josh Avalo, this is a do or die for him. Either he'll have a shot at the title, and this should be a great, great fight. And uh, I'll pick Josh Avalo to win with 10 five rounds because Floyd has a rather glass jaw, but uh, I hear he's real strong now. But the fans are in for exciting night tonight, and the one who wins will deserve a shot at my crown. All right, that's very fine, Muhammad Ali, the heavyweight champion. And now, let's go up into the center of the ring and Johnny Eddy. Former heavyweight champion and retired undefeated heavyweight champ. Now you'll hear the roar. Joe Wolcott and Rocky Marciano. Oh, that fight they put on. The old Brockton Blockbuster. Here are two more great heavyweight champions, ladies and gentlemen. The Cinderella man, James J. Braddock, and the brown bomber, Joe Lewis. They certainly are not forgotten. And here's changing Joe Walcott. There's Walcott now with Lewis. And Braddock is in there. And ladies and gentlemen, last but far from least, Another retired heavyweight champion, James J. Tunney. Gene Tunney. Gene Tunney, his son, now a congressman in California. Gene Tunney. The garden was sold out as early as last Friday. Here's Tunney. Ah, 
Now, here are the ring officials assigned by the New York State Athletic Commission. The judges, Joe Armstrong and Tony Castellano. The timekeeper, Fred Abatello. Counting for the knockdowns is referee Joe Lascalzo. And the referee for the main event, Zach Clayton. Twelve rounds. Twelve rounds. Introducing from Toronto, Canada, Larry Blackjohns. He weighs 208 pounds. Heavyweight champion of Canada, George Chabalo. Chabalo. His opponent from New York. He's wearing white trunks. He weighs 197 and a quarter. Two-time former heavyweight king, Floyd Patterson. Patterson, Savoyer, you may receive your instructions this afternoon in the boxing commissioner's office. You were informed that the eight-second knockdown ruling and the three-knockdown ruling are still in effect and also in the event of a knockdown. The bell sounds with the fighter on the floor. The fight, the, the count will continue. If the fighter doesn't regain his feet before the count reaches 10, it will be considered a knockout. Is that clear to you, Floyd? Is that clear to you, Chevalier? Are there any questions? If not, shake hands now, come out boxing at the bell. Good luck to move. We'll be right back with the start of the patterson Chevallo fight in just a moment. Chevallo in black trunks, Patterson in white. Chevallo is tremendously strong with a granite chin. Patterson has usually had the fastest hands among the heavyweights up until the present champion. They say Patterson's a boxer, but he's usually a puncher. He has a lightning light left jab, a good hook, a good combination puncher. Two minutes left in round one. As you can see, Chevallo likes to work the body. Zach Clayton, the referee. coming from Chevallo's nose. And he draws a warning from the referee. So far, Chevallo has no defense for that sharp jab. left to go on the round. Round's almost over. The bell ends round one. We'll go back to the corner with Floyd Patterson, the former heavyweight champion who was born in Waco, North Carolina, January 4th, 1935. He's six feet tall, 
In the corner with him is manager and trainer Dan Florio right in front of him. On the left-hand side is uh, Ernie Fowler and on the right-hand side, Nick Florio. Champ, how did you think Patterson looked in the well, first round? Well, Patterson surprised me, and I believe I'll have to change my mind. I'm a man who uh, tells the truth. I believe that this man won. He won the first round. He surprised me. George is fighting a little rough, a little dirty as far as boxing is concerned, hitting behind the head, holding, hitting on fences, and he's not doing like I thought he would. But Florida's determined, and I believe he's a threat to my title. Round two. George Chevallo in the black trunk, Floyd Patterson in the white trunk. Madison Square Garden, a packed house. The ringside is jam-packed. It set a record for press credentials this fight. 290 applications for press seats. Now Patterson draws a slight warning. You see Patterson revert to his old kangaroo style, leaping in. Round two almost over. The bell ends round two, and we go back to the corner of George Chevallo, the Canadian heavyweight title holder, born in Canada, Toronto, September 12, 1937. Facing him is manager Irving Ungerman. On the right-hand side is trainer Ted McWhorter. And on the left-hand side, Johnny Sulo. Champ, how does Chevallo look to you? Well, George Chevallo got beat that round. Claude Patterson got him. If you let me tell it, he's using, he's still using those holding and hitting behind the back tactics. But uh, if Fly Patterson just keep cool, I noticed Fly Patterson was watching, I uh, heard that he was watching films of Iron Sonny Liston. And if you look at Floyd, you'll notice he's fighting just like a thought Liston. He's keeping his distance and holding him in clinches. Well, Floyd, uh, this is the first time you've seen that. Uh, how does it look from this angle? Uh, <coughs> it looks exciting. Rocky, how did you score those first two? Yes, it was a very exciting uh, first two rounds. Uh, Floyd uh, surprised everybody in the house that night. He uh, came right out there and started boxing and punching and winging them. He took some. He made it an exciting first two rounds, and he had the uh, people in the garden right there just up on their feet. They enjoyed it right from the very beginning. Floyd, we heard Dumpy say that you reverted to your old-time kangaroo style. Did you realize that you were leaping at the man as you're throwing those punches off your feet? No, I didn't. I agree. 
Is there many time in the fight when, uh, are there many times in the fight when you re don't realize this? You're off your feet and throwing punches? Many times I do. I think it's more instinct than anything else. When you fought out of the corner there in the second round, did you, uh, and then you threw a kangaroo shortly after that, did you kind of think you had him going then? Well, there were several times in the fight. Uh, I think that was the first time that I thought that I had uh, hurt him. Uh, and I was trying to finish him, but unfortunately, he can take a lot more than I thought he could. Well, we have ten more great rounds left, Floyd, and we'll be right back with rounds three and four in just one moment. on the white trunk, Chevalo and Black. As you know, there have been no knockdowns. Nobody's been hurt. Two minutes left in round three of a 12-rounder at Madison Square Garden in New York. It's a long time since Patterson has uh, boxed this way. He usually comes in winging. But he's uh, fighting smartly and expertly tonight. Hard body punches by Shabalo. One minute left in round three. shots in at the head yet. There's the bell ending round three. Now let's see uh, some of the action. We've got an isolated camera here in the garden that we're going to turn loose any moment now. Meanwhile, let's hear what the heavyweight champion of the world has to say now. Well, this fight, Don, was a little close. This was a close round. As you can see, Chevaldo's punching pretty good now. He's a little more determined, and Floyd seemed to be getting a little tired to me. But he's staying in that corner too long, you notice. He shouldn't stay in one spot too long. Well, that was the champ bringing you up to date by way of our isolated camera. We're coming up to round four. This bout is scheduled for 12 rounds. We have one of the most enthusiastic fighting crowds in the last 25 years in this arena tonight. The last time the fight arena was sold out was two years ago when Cassius Clay fought Doug Jones. Here's round four. Clayton is the referee. 
and he's a good one. to me, uh, Mohammed. too many punches, as you know he's moving. champion Rocky Marciano with Floyd Patterson and with economist of the New York Post Milton Gross. Rocky what are your reactions now? Floyd uh, you spent a lot of time in close with uh, Chevallo. Was that your uh, plan before the battle or did it just develop that way? No it just developed that way. Actually uh, I am more well most of my fights all of my fights have been aggressive and this was the first time I've ever fought a going away battle and a defensive battle with uh, less offense than usual. And I would say that uh, this was a fairly new style for me, and because of this, uh, I didn't do as well uh, the first time as I think I'll do the next time. Did you train to fight that way? Uh, we had trained to fight that way to a certain degree, although I disagreed with my manager, Dan Florio. I wanted to fight an aggressive fight, but uh, we changed tactics uh, after a while I agreed with him. Through the sixth round, Floyd, have you hit him with a what you consider your Sunday punch yet? Well, I would say in those last two rounds, uh, Chevallo showed the determination that he has and his aggressiveness. Uh, he did hurt me a few times, and I did hit him with more or less my Sunday punch. Uh, and he came right back throwing punches, and I would say he showed a tremendous amount of courage in those last two rounds. And we have more coming up, rounds seven and eight in just a moment. Here's round seven. Zach Clayton is the referee and doing a good job.
It's a 12-round bout, and this is round seven with a minute gone. fighting a smart fight. He's exactly the way I call this. Round seven almost over. There's the bell ending round seven here at Madison Square Garden. Got Chivalo on the left, uh, looking in his corner. Ted McWhorter, the trainer, is working on him now. Johnny Sulo, his manager, Irving Ungerman. Well, uh, Don, this is a real colorful fight. I know the fans are getting the money, their money's worth. It's going longer, and it's not turning out like I thought it was. As, as I said earlier, I'm predicted that Chivalo win by knockout, but it looks like he let me down. And if Floyd can keep up this pace and look as good as he's doing, I'm sure he will be a qualified challenger for my crown after I finish the unfinished business with Sonny Liston. You're looking at Floyd now, and... Uh, 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 I'm sure that he will win this fight, and he's really surprised. I mean, I got to give him credit. He's a good fighter, and he's fighting hard. The warning buzzer is sounded now for round eight. See Jack Schaefer with our ringside camera getting into position. There's round eight of a 12-rounder. A packed house at Madison Square Garden, and I haven't heard anyone complain. It's been a good fight. Chivaro keeps hoping that he'll get in the one big punch to the head that would turn it his way. Isn't that right? I believe you're right, Don. It's only a matter of hoping you get the lucky punch because as it stands now, Floyd is outmaneuvering him and he's got these, he has the best boxing ability. If he can keep up the pace he started out with and stay out of those clinches. How about that body punishment from uh, Shavala? Well, uh, body punching means nothing if you're in good shape. Ooh, boy, I just got in the flurry of good punches. Every one of them was solid. As I said earlier, George takes a punch. Yes, those body punches will wear you out if you're not in shape. But I think he's in shape for this. He's determined to get his crown back. Two minutes left in round eight at Madison Square Garden. Okay, they're watching this fight.
jump. McGuire can only keep on him. He'll knock him out, I believe. Oh, he's determined. He's coming back. Oh, what I lose, Boyd, will know he's been in a fight. That's right. I believe both men will. his own self, he should move if he's not too tired. he was telling him to keep his distance and to watch him, watch him in the clinches because he's got sharp punches on the inside. What do you think they're telling Chevalo, champ? Well, uh, it's really hard to predict something like that. Uh, Chevalo, I imagine, I imagine they're saying you got him going, just stay on him, he's tired because Patterson do look a little uh, leg and arm weary. Floyd, is Cassius right as Danny is talking to you in the corner at that time? Is he telling you the move, don't, don't get yourself caught inside? Uh, yes, he, they constantly told me, Dan and Ernie Fowler, my trainer is Ernie Fowler, they were constantly telling me to move and use the jab. Uh, I was a bit tired at that point, uh, and sometimes when you get tired, you get, um, a bit loose, you know, and free with yourself, and this is what was happening to me in those later rounds. Because it seemed to me, at part of this round, you try to work outside and take advantage of the ring, and then Shivala would close with you. And that's when you would take the body beating. Yeah. Well, see, it's going to be pretty difficult to uh, forget my own style. My old style is I usually bore in and I usually fight in close. But for this fight, I definitely didn't want to fight in close. My, we trained that way. Uh, but every now and then I would forget and I would stay in close. But while in close, I didn't throw any punches. That was a mistake. Uh, we had trained to stay away from Shamalo and more or less boxing defensively and offensively when the opportunity presented itself. It seemed to me that if the man was hands as fast as yours, who could move so much faster than Shavalo, and with him being that strong, it would seem the wise thing to stay away and use the ring. Yeah, if you could, if you see, uh, if Shavalo learned a little more about boxing, how to throw combinations, and he was a bit faster, he has all of the determination, and he could take a tremendous punch, in my opinion, he would be three times the fighter he is now if he would learn to do these things. Well, you're not doing a bad job yourself right here, Floyd. We're gonna see more of it in just one minute. Here's round nine, scheduled for 12, a packed house of enthusiastic fans at Madison Square Garden. Patterson, the white trunks, Chevalo in black. Zach Clayton, the referee. You notice Floyd's left jabs are kind of shocking. They're really hard and solid. You see those jabs. Fighting a smart fight. This don't look like old Floyd Patterson I used to know. Chevalo has never been down, keeps pouring in. 
Patterson piles up points. Trying to get Floyd on the ropes again, and Floyd knows it. One minute to go in round nine of a 12-rounder. No knockdowns in the contest. Right as a headlock for a moment. when those punches start raining. He is cut around the left eye. Round nine is over, and the crowd gives him both a hand as they go back to their corner. Champ, in a moment, we may have the isolated camera, but beforehand, how about it now? Well, I would say Paul Patterson wasn't around. He moved, he had his left jab moving nice, and then when they did come into a flaring clinch, his guard would get the best and then get out. I would give him this round, and Chevalier was tough, hard, and determined. You're looking at the isolated camera now, and you see these guard has solid left jabs. All of those punches connected, but you see George comes back, but he didn't really hit Floyd with a good one. So Floyd got the best of that. And all through the round, as you see, uh, uh, Floyd mostly outboxed him. Champ, we're coming up to round 10 now, and... Uh, round 10? Is this, is this round 10? This will be round 10, so well, the three right. big ones are still ahead. Right. Lord, this keep uh, Rocky Marciano, your old pal. One of my idols. He was a good one, wasn't he? Yes, he was. How do you think he would have done with him? Well, I believe Rocky would have knocked out either one of these guys in a couple of rounds. How about you? Well, that's hard to say. You know <laughs> me. I might have to predict the round. <laughs> well, best man, I would say the best man would win in a fight like that. Both but you and Rocky are undefeated. Yes, sir. I might have to retire quick like he did. I believe George got the worst of that. Could have been hurt there, Champ. Well, I didn't. You can never tell. Both of them got hit. Yeah. A beautiful, evenly matched fight. So, uh, Patterson has forced Chevalier to go to the body, keeping his hands so high. Well, I imagine his manager told him to stay at the body because it's kind of hard to hit him in the head. You'll notice he's fighting a lot like me. He's moving a lot. A big uh, flurry by Patterson.
they come any tougher. when you told the people afterwards that finally uh, you could take a punch? I think in that round I proved that, uh, uh, not necessarily that I can take that much of a punch, but I did prove that I don't have a China chin. That's what I meant, the China stated, chin yes. reference. Mm -hmm. Floyd, um, with the fast pace that you two fellows put up from, for 10 rounds now, and with the amount of punches you threw and the amount of punches that Chevallo threw, everybody realizes you have to be good and tired. I wonder if you uh, can explain just the feeling of being weary and tired at the end of 10 fast rounds like that. Well, as you know, Rocky, your uh, arms begin to feel like you're holding a uh, uh, tremendous weight in each one. Your legs begin to slow up. Uh, overall, you feel like you're carrying a ton. And uh, of course, at that point, uh, sometimes some fighters change their strategy. At that point, I didn't change my strategy. Of course, I may have stayed in a lot closer than what I was advised to or what I had trained to, but that was because of the weariness and tired and being tired. Roy, was it at this point before the 11th round began that your corner told you you were behind and you'd have to really come on? Yes, when I went back to the corner in the 10th round, my manager, Dan Florio, and my trainer, Ernie, they told me that uh, I had lost that round, I had lost it big, and that the last two rounds would uh, determine the fight. Well, we'll have the last two rounds for you in just one moment. Chevallo's corner as we are ready to come up to round 11, and the crowd is uh, literally on the edges of the seat. All 19,000 of them. Standees are up on their toes. It's round 11 of a 12-rounder. If Brock can keep the same pace, keep cool, he'll win the bout. They'll both be pretty tired tomorrow, won't they, Sam? Well, I, I believe so. I use around when it goes this long. But this fight is a great help to boxing. It didn't end in one round. That's right. I believe Floyd would beat Sonny Liston fighting like this. Chevaldo might try anything now, only a couple of rounds left. Two rounds. Patterson was tagged a I'm passing left hook. Yes, he was. Both boys landed with that left. Chevallo has been the aggressor. 
pitches not to take anything from Patterson, who's fought a tremendous fight. As does Shavala. They're in Patterson's corner now. Or were. There's no question about that. And we're going to come up now to the 12th and final round. Any predictions now, champ? Well, uh, I predict that Floyd should win this fight and will be the uh, next contender for me after I finish with uh, Mr. Sonny Liston. This was a good round. Floyd Patterson won it easy. If he keep the distance and just do good this round, He'll win the fight easy on points. Zach Clayton, the referee, went to each corner to tell them that the final round is coming up. There have been no knockdowns. Each has taken the best punches the other could throw. Twelfth and final round. Referee Zach Clayton will have them touch gloves. Chevalier, the black trunks, Patterson and White. There have been no knockdowns.
fight was a beautiful fight. Lord Patterson surprised me. He won it. And I guess he's the next man for me. As soon as I finish Lister. A great fighter. God, he's shaking everybody's hand. I hope he uh, come over here and shake mine. Uh, beautiful fight. I'm really surprised God is ready. Uh, I understand he was watching films of Sonny Liston and I, and if you notice his ducking and his dancing and his moving and backing, it was identically the way it was when I fought Liston. Beautiful fight. I'm really surprised, and I bet on the wrong man. We'll have the decision on this fight in just a moment. The commissioners are looking at the cards now. I'm sure there's no doubt about who won. Everyone plus the referee should have voted for Patterson. I know I would. It was easy to see that Floyd Patterson is the winner. Now he should have a crack at my title. And I'm sure the fans out there would love to see Johnny Addy now taking the uh, uh, judge's slips. Beautiful fight, Floyd Patterson. Beautiful fight. Now we must hear the decision. Beautiful. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's the decision. Referee Zach Clayton scores it. Six, five, one even for Patterson. One vote for Patterson by the referee. Judge Tony Castellano, seven to five, favor of Patterson. I judge the winner. The other judge, Joe Armstrong, eight to four. Lloyd Patterson by unanimous decision. Half the crowd likes it and the other half doesn't. of a fight to be aggressive and as you can see every time I pressed and tried to be aggressive that was the only time that I really got hit with some stinging shots well, Floyd I did it. learn that fighting Chavello this type of fight I did not do that well Floyd in the excitement I forgot to congratulate you I thought it was one of your finest fights because it had been so long since you went more than six rounds how did it feel to you well because of Chevallo's constantly pressing me, throwing punches, throwing legal punches in the clinches, I was unable to... Did you say illegal? No, legal. Oh, legal, I'm sorry. Legal punches, I was unable to float with his strength, so therefore I uh, decided to box him. All right, now I guess the usual question, what about your plan? Would you like to, of course you'd like to fight uh, uh, Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, the heavyweight Lord champion, Patterson wouldn't you? Well, my main goal is to fight Cassius Clay, and if I am successful, then I would fight Sonny Liston and then retire. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Clay says you're going to get a title shot, and good luck to you, Floyd. I know you're tired. It was a rough fight. How about Chevalo? What kind of what kind of a person is he? Well, although I know Mr. Chevalo feels very, very badly, I can honestly say that. He gained a tremendous amount of fans tonight, perhaps more than I, because of his constant power, constant pressing, and I was unable to cope with his strength. One more thing, Floyd. I think it's a tremendous tribute to both of you that you packed this garden. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Floyd, uh, can I take a fairly good person now? My chin is not so challenged now. <laughs> you 
Keith, you take a dandy punch. You took, you took some real good ones. Good luck to you, Fly. Thank you. And now here's the champ for his comments. Floyd Patterson has proved his worth. He will get a shot at me as soon as I can get Sonny Liston out of the way. He put up a good show, a beautiful fight. He surprised me. He beat Chevaldo, which was which is a tough, tough fighter, who recently beat Doug Jones. He is really a tough fighter. I must give him his credit. He fought a beautiful fight, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to go to training camp and get there early. Everybody's taking pictures. I know Floyd Patterson is happy. He's been down down so much, and now uh, he's back on top. And I'm sure the fans are surprised. Everybody got their money's worth, and I got my money's worth. Jeff, how do you feel about uh, being a boxing commentator? Well, this is rather tough, Don. I believe I stick to boxing. I, you know, I don't like to talk so much. <laughs> you have to talk too much when you're working on these things. Well, there it is. And we'll be right back with Rocky Marciano, with Floyd Patterson, and Milton Gross in just a moment. Well, the nice thing about this is we've just seen the fight, and now we're going to talk about it with some pretty important people. First of all, from Brockton, Massachusetts, as you know, the only man ever to retire undefeated as heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky Marciano. Floyd Patterson, of course, very important to this fight and our discussion in general, and a man who knows both of them very well. He wrote books about both of them, Milton Gross of the New York Post, writing a biography of Rocky Marciano, I Fought All the Way, and a Floyd Patterson victory over myself. So to get it started, Floyd, uh, you're usually rating yourself against the perfect Floyd Patterson. And I wonder how you rate yourself in this fight against George Chevalo. Well, I thought, <clears throat> I thought that I fought a very smart fight outside of the fact that um, I stayed in close too much and I let myself get pinned against the ropes too much. Other than that, I thought I fought a very smart fight. Uh, but in my opinion, uh, in the future, uh, if my opponent, George Chavello, should uh, get a little more experience in uh, boxing, boxing, and should learn how to throw combinations with everything else, in my opinion, he will make a very, very good fight in the future. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, uh, this is the first that I've seen the film, and uh, I'm more impressed now with Chavello's determination than I was in the actual fight. I didn't know he was that determined and aggressive. Were you impressed at all with Floyd Patterson? Oh, yes. I was, um, I was impressed that I was able to beat such a man as uh, Chevelle. Yes. Floyd, we know now uh, that you fought the fight with a bad hand. Uh, why did you do it? Well, Milton, I have something to say about that. Uh, actually, I hurt my hand down in Puerto Rico in December. I had my doctor, Dr. Michael Blatt, fly down to Puerto Rico a week before the fight, took x-rays of the hand, and he gave me some kind of treatment. I forget the name of it. And uh, I was able to fight the fight in the in Puerto Rico, and the hand was slightly injured there. How is the hand now? The hand is all right now. Is it? Uh, yes. Uh, the commission doctors, they've already x-rayed it again and looked at it, and they all find it in very good condition now. Uh, judging from the fight, as you can see, uh, it didn't look like anything was wrong with the hand in the actual fight because uh, I used my left more than the right. And that speaks well for Floyd Patterson's determination, too. Yeah. Floyd uh, Chevallo said after the fight that Zach Clayton, the referee, was continually breaking up the clinches and preventing him from fighting his kind of fight. What's your comment on that? Well, I do not wish to discredit my opponent Chevallo in to any degree because I have a tremendous amount of admiration for him now. However, I will say that Zach Clayton, the referee, uh, did do the right thing in breaking the clinches. After the fight, the only injuries that I uh, had after the fight was two blood vessels in the back on each side, in which I'm being treated for right now. And I would say that the referee broke the fight, broke the clinches, because uh, my opponent, Chevallo, which was partially my fault, whenever he would throw a punch to the midsection, I would switch to the side. So I would say it was partially my fault also. And I think that's the reason why the referee continuously broke the fight. I mean, broke the clinches. Rocky, you and Chevallo have been compared as far as styles go. Is that true about that style? Yes, uh, uh, we have a similar style. In fact, I noticed that throughout the fight that Chevallo stayed very much to the body. 
Uh, a lot of people probably wondering why he did just that. I think the reason for it uh, are because Floyd is so fast in there that you have to uh, hit him to the body first to sort of find him, to sort of um, uh, try to hurt him and bring his guard down. Uh, uh, punches to the head early in the fight can make you look very bad when you miss. And I think Chevallo did just that, hitting to the body, uh, uh, trying to weaken uh, Floyd around the middle, uh, eventually hoping that uh, the guard would come down and then shoot to the head. I think he started a bit too late uh, throwing for the head. I, I do think, though, that uh, it was a wise fight on his part to stay with the body, uh, a, a less uh, formidable, uh, a, an opponent like Floyd, who was so determined and so strong and so conditioned, just took everything he had, but there aren't too many of those around, and uh, other fights, uh, fighting another man, it would have been a good fight for him. Mm -hmm. Floyd, you've been fighting now for some 13 years as a pro, 15 years in all. How long, how much further do you intend to go on? Well, my main goal is to get another chance with Sonny Liston. Of course, at this point, I still don't feel that I deserve another chance with him. Uh, I wouldn't even pay to see it myself. I feel that if I got the chance to fight Cassius Clay and I was successful with him, well, then I would be deserving a chance uh, to fight Sonny Liston again. But of course, uh, at this point, Clay would have to fight Liston and beat Liston again. Well, this may take a little more time, certainly another year, I would think, perhaps more. And in all these years, you've paid a price for this. You've paid a price in isolation, in seclusion, in being away from your children, yes. your family. Is the, is the price worth it that you have paid? Well, well to let me put it this way, uh, if I had it all to do over again, which includes all the defeats, I would do it. There haven't been many defeats, then. Well, not many, but when there was, there really was. So the price was yeah. worth it, though? Yes. Rocky, you retired for similar reasons, family. Would you say boxing's worth the price? Uh, boxing certainly is worth the price if you give it everything you've got. I gave it uh, eight years of uh, complete effort. Uh, just like Floyd here, I was at a camp 90% uh, of the time. Uh, I was fortunate in that I kept very active. I was fortunate in that I uh, was able to continue to win and wrap up an eight-year career. Um, I feel certain that uh, it was well worth the eight years I put in on it. Now, where does boxing go from here now, Floyd? There are people who have said, in effect, that a week ago, when you fought this fight against Chivalo, you virtually saved boxing. You put it back on its feet. Do you think boxing, boxing is back on its feet again? Well, I don't actually feel that I actually saved boxing. I think eventually uh, uh, boxing would get back on its feet itself. I just feel that I more or less gave it a boost, that's all. Now, how much of a boost do you think you've given to yourself? Well, I think I've moved another notch up. I think now that uh, I beat Chavala convincingly, that uh, I more or less really deserve a chance with Mr. Clay now. Of course, if he's successful with Sonny Liston. If Liston beats Clay, then what? Well, if Liston beats Clay, I will, would want to fight Clay anyway. Uh, because regardless of how you look at it, I would have to go through Clay in order to get to Liston. And then you feel that you'll be ready for Sonny this time? Yes. You would pay your way in to see that fight? That one I would, if I was successful with Clay, yes. Mm -hmm. more than a penny. I think, <laughs> a, uh, I think a Floyd Patterson Cassius Clay fight would be a real, real great match. I have heard people all over the world right now talk about that fight. It just looks like it's the best match possible. Cash has said during the fight there, Rocky, that you could have knocked Floyd or, uh, or George Chavallo out in one round. Oh, we don't like to talk about those things. A uh, young, good-conditioned fellow like Floyd Patterson is too pre unpredictable. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, I'd like to thank you very much for being here. Milton Gross, thank you. New York Post syndicated columnist, Rocky Marciano, and, of course, Floyd Patterson. And we wish you the best of luck, Floyd. I'd like to say, you. if you don't mind, Not at all. Uh, thank you to all of my friends up in Marlboro for giving me their support and coming down to the fight. And thank you for a fine fight.